McDonald's presents Burger Reviews by Hamburglar, the classic cheeseburger. Hamburglar? Bravo, bravo. He said, the patties are juicier than ever before. Bada ba ba ba. Bravo. Available at most restaurants in this area. That's Arthi. That's Noor. And you're listening to The Reality Is. planet are you living on yeah what crazy planet earth crazy enough crazy enough maryland but you know the crazier planet is florida but okay (laughs) yeah (laughs) the south is a weird planet it is hello welcome we're talking about rehasas of new york and beverly hills today you know one made me think a lot and the other one made me laugh a lot. Let me guess. New York made you think a lot and Beverly Hills made you laugh a lot. No, I was thinking um, a lot with Beverly Hills because I wanted to also know who Hunky Dory is. <laughs> I know who Hunky Dory is. Hunky <laughs> Dory is what Kathy thinks is Dorit's nickname. Yeah. Dorit is Hunky Dory, the English girl. Or... <laughs> My English girl. But do you notice that when she said my English girl, Dorit responded with, I'm from Connecticut. Her voice yeah. sounded so different. Oh, yeah. She was like, no, no, no. I, this she is was my, suddenly like, American. I'm yeah. from Connecticut. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was a voice that I've never heard come out of yeah. Dorit's mouth. <laughs> also, yeah. when Kathy says, who is Hunky Dory? She mm-hmm. says it in this way that I thought was so funny. Everyone's arguing. She goes, <laughs> No, but see, last <laughs> last week she didn't know who Mr. Poppins was. Was it Poppins? <laughs> Puffins or Poppins? She didn't know somebody last week. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy is like, who are all these other characters? <laughs> How many women are on this show? And where are those women? Are there men on this show too? Mr. Poppins? <laughs> And, and then like, I don't have my glasses on. I, I don't have my glasses on. Are there supposed to be other women on the show with me that I don't know about? The way she says, <laughs> the way she says, who is Hunky Dory? <laughs> Everybody looks at her and they're like, at first they were like, who are you calling Hunky Dory? Who's saying, who are you? Who is saying that you are Hunky Dory? No, she literally thinks there's another person named Hunky Dory. <laughs> <laughs> who is hunky dory yes <laughs> and i am convinced that now she thinks that is dory's name hunky dory that's her nickname i bet kathy hilton calls her hunky dory in her mind or she thinks that dorit's husband is hunky dory pk is pk is <laughs> chunky dory <laughs> chunky dory let's talk about real housewives of beverly hills okay i'm gonna Uh, say this okay i will eat anything harry hamlin makes me too but Mm -hmm. not in that nasty fucking kitchen that kitchen needs a reno that kitchen is stuffed with stuff did you see how many vegetables and fruits he had all piled up in the kitchen there was no room for anything i feel like that kitchen the back of the shelves there's like cockroaches oh 100 percent. remember there was like a rat in their house yes yeah i feel like that house is open to the elements at all times her kitchen is open to the elements and it's filled with food so i'm sure there are critters in there 100 percent. yeah and it doesn't look like the kitchen has ever been deep cleaned yes it feels it doesn't grimy. even look like it, does, it feels grimy like it's like some there's grandma stain yeah there's some grandma from italy her kitchen that has never been washed ever i mean no disrespect to grandmas from italy no. because i think that that kitchen no i'm just saying italy stain. because the the vibe of the house is italian yeah. that's why that's why it's I'm just italy, a very but... yeah it's just a very dingy dingy house and dingy yes. kitchen it's a very like when i think about rena's house i think like terracotta mm-hmm very Which is fine. I love terracotta, but I feel like her kitchen is is just too cluttered, and it has so much stuff in it, and so it's not stuff. clean and washed and bright enough. It all it also feels dark. Like they have to have lights on at all times. It feels it's dark very enough. dark. 
Yeah. And then also now they're talking about building a pool. And I'm like, how about you update your the inside of your house? But then again, mm-hmm. it's like Rinna's house where nobody eats. So yeah. Yeah. The probably... other thing is Harry Hamlin loves to cook and grow vegetables and cook. But none of Rinna doesn't eat. Her kids don't eat. No. <laughs> Harry Hamlin barely lives there. He he's cooking in Canada. So what, what is up bolognese with this in bolognese Canada. in Canada? What was that about? He's always making bolognese in Canada. What does Canada have to do? With it? <laughs> His bolognese is famous in Canada, like Celine Dion once was. Like <laughs> I don't understand. I don't he, understand. Is he Celine Dion's chef? Oh my god, she doesn't eat either. She doesn't so. eat either. <laughs> Um, when they were at the grocery store, it was very yeah. evident that Rina has never been to a grocery store. <laughs> yeah, she was like, do you want something else? Do you want something else? She was like going down aisles with no fucking reason. She was just, it was like Disneyland for her. <laughs> it, was, it was. And then at the end, did you notice she was looking for wine and she goes, I just want to see if Whispering Angel is here. Yeah. <laughs> Which was very much a dig at Lisa Vanderpump because I think... <laughs> she makes it always a point that she drinks Whispering Angel Rosé and yeah, not yeah. Lisa Vanderpump Rosé. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, the woman hasn't been on this show for, like, two seasons right now. Like, let it go. Yeah. And she randomly goes into the corner to order some burger. And she's just standing there and pretending she eats food. I'm like, what are you buying burger for? He's Harry Hamlin can make you something. No, and also I think that she just went up to the counter to talk about the burger, but not yeah. actually buy the buy burger. burger. Yeah. yeah. Erica and Crystal go to Kathy's house to play tennis because yes. Erica is really doing things this season to keep her check. <laughs> Erica has to see Erica cannot afford not to film this season. She yes. needs every every episode check. Yes. So she, she is showing up for stuff that she would never show up for before. Yeah. Like in the past, she would say something like, This face doesn't let balls fly at them. Yeah. Or I'm like, like something dumb honey, like that. You know? I don't wake up early enough to do yeah. this. Yeah. I am up late at night being Erica Jane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I get enough exercise shaking my booty on the stage. Yeah. I don't yeah. need this and whatever yeah. she would never do this but now she's like pretending to hit balls which she now barely, she's but... playing tennis with not just crystal but, but... two of crystal's random friends right. like... <laughs> <laughs> and Crystal is like yeah kathy doesn't mind us using this we just come over i'm like really kathy's asleep Kathy's just walking in the house in her big pajamas, oversized pajamas. Kathy looks so cute and comfy. She just stumbled down, wobbled down out. She's yeah. like, I just woke up. It Kathy, was- Kathy truly gives zero fucks, and I'm all I'm here for it. <laughs> it's amazing. She's the true rich person in this show. <laughs> she's like, she really just, is. She, she is. is. <laughs> she doesn't care. And she's the only rich person on that show who I think is just there for fun. Yeah. She's just there for the laughs. She's there, just there. She thinks there are like 10 other people on the show and she's nobody notices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's like, I want Kathy to name all the women in the show. I bet she doesn't know half of them. No clue. She could never name everybody on the show. Yeah. I feel like she barely remembers who Andy Cohen is. Or Bravo TV. Or Bra- Okay, I want her to not only name. I feel like she didn't even sign the contracts for this show. She has a power of attorney with an attorney who signed the contracts for this show. She doesn't even even bother signing her documents or something. No, not at all. And honestly, I feel like at this point, Bravo could probably just have Kathy on the show for free. Yeah. And she would be fine with it. I would watch Real Housewife off Beverly Hills and just follow Kathy around. Yes. I think that would be fun. Yeah. So we see Kyle and Kathy also meet and mm-hmm. we learn that when things are good with Kathy and Kyle, Kim isn't talking to Kyle. Mm-hmm. But when things are good with Kim and Kyle, Kathy's not talking to Kim. Mm-hmm. And we learn that Kyle doesn't have Kim's new number. <laughs> Why would Kim give you her number, Kyle, when you are going, she knows it's holiday time and you're going to call her and talk to her, feel sorry for her and make her feel like shit because she's alone. And you have your kids and your husband and you're taking pictures with them for holidays and you feel pity for your sister. And then she even says, she's like, don't you feel so bad for Kim? She has no one. I'm like, shut up, Kyle. You're so This is why, this is why Kim changed her number. She doesn't want this negativity in her 
life? Yes. Oh my God. She's but talking to Kathy. Kathy doesn't make her feel that way. Yeah. Also because Kathy, again, doesn't have any ulterior motives for why she yeah. does things. Yeah. Kyle was chummy with Kim last season, so Kim could bring Brandy on so they could take down right. Denise. Yes. So Kim probably doesn't love the fact that she got used by Kyle mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. destroy a whole other woman. You know what yeah. I mean? And then once that was done, Kyle probably never called her again, which is why she doesn't have the new number. There you go. We go to Erica's cute little house. You guys, Mm -hmm. she pays $10,000 a month for Mm -hmm. rent. Mm -hmm. Sutton pays $10,000 a month for rent. Mm -hmm. These are not small houses. They keep talking about it like it's Gina's casita. Yeah. Somebody, there was something online. I don't don't know the sources. I just say things because I read it. And I I read it at the end of the day when I'm half asleep. So I don't know who (laughs) posts all this, okay? But this is what I read on the social social media. The house that she's living in was bought by an agent. She bought it in an agent's name. Yes. And now she's renting from the agent. So essentially she's paying herself the rent. Yeah. So basically Erica's house was bought by Erica in 2009, then Mm -hmm. transferred to a company. To manage the house. To manage the house. And now she's renting from them. Mm -hmm. Now the company that the house was transferred to, I think, was associated with Tom's firm. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know what the webs of the money are, but Erica is doing just fine. And it's true. I mean, whatever. Erica does have a book and she does have, you know, all these deals. She has probably all of the deals that like fucking Stassi has. So like Mm -hmm. whatever money Stassi makes, Erica makes, plus Erica makes money off of Bravo. The Beverly Hills Housewives make a fuck ton of money. Yeah. Like they all have million dollar contracts. So Erica is doing just fine. This It's just so crazy because she keeps presenting it like some sort of pity party that everybody should be having on her. And everybody's like, I you wash seem the genuinely happy. Yeah, I wash the dishes. You should see me do the laundry. And I'm congratulations. Yeah. You know, if you paid Ma- Mikey, he would do it for you. 100%. And I think Mikey's the one who's doing it anyway. So it doesn't matter. Also, you can't afford a housekeeper or you can't afford a cleaning lady to come to your house, but you can afford uh-huh. Mikey. I don't yeah. understand that. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing was that, you know, she is pretending that she is in such a bad place and that she has all this money oh i have this thing and i have that thing did you hear that she just got dropped from rihanna's fendi line yes so things are because now the judge has ruled that the defendants can go after her for money yes correct so So, please do note erica what exactly was it that you said you have the book money and the deals and the shoe and then she walked through the closets and showed her full display of all of her shoes and her clothes yes every room dedicated to i don't understand why she's doing it though because i I really never did that and now she's doing it and showing off her wealth i don't but i'm telling you i think it's because at that point she thought that divorcing tom would save her from anybody going after her and i wouldn't was she trying to establish that this is the level at which her life was so that she could ask tom for more money i think that she is showing her life quote unquote honestly because Mm -hmm. i bet you that she made a deal with the feds or Mm -hmm. she made a deal with somebody Mm -hmm. so that she could get off scot-free and all of the shit that's happening now with Mm -hmm. everybody coming for erica Mm -hmm. i don't think she was expecting it i think that she divorced him under the impression like under the guidance that if you leave him then they can't come for you yes if you leave him she was given wrong. oh i get it so she was given bad advice at some point but that yes. did not stick because of she falsified something or she lied about something and so the deal fell through yes. or she didn't know the full picture and she was not given the right advice so now yes he is in trouble yeah, yeah I there can you see go that. Sutton comes over with Rena. Rena loses her mind really fakely over every single thing in the house. Rena honestly just enters any new space like she's never seen it before. Rena entered Erica's house the way Rena entered the grocery store. <laughs> she did. She was like, oh, wow. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, my God. This is so gorgeous. gorgeous. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Oh my god, Uh, wonderful. Also, Erica's house is huge. It's huge, yeah. The backyard has like a cabana. And a swimming pool. And a swimming pool. Yeah. Do you know who her neighbor was? Yeah. 
<laughs> What's his name? My birthday buddy, Army Hammer. Army Hammer. And she said that she hears stuff in the backyard and she wouldn't mind an invitation to it. That's what mm-hmm. she tweeted out. <laughs> yeah. So Sun comes over when Rena's over to Erica's house and they're talking about how excited they are to eat mm-hmm. Harry Hamlin's bolognese. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sutton says, I'm really excited to see everybody. I just don't want everybody to keep bringing up the peeping Tom thing. Sutton, yeah. honey, you're the only one bringing it up <laughs> at this point. Yes. At this point, no one is bringing that up. Sutton is bringing that up because Sutton feels a sort, some sort of way. She cannot get beyond it. She cannot get around that. Yeah. They go to Rena's house to mm-hmm. eat Harry's bolognese. Again, mm-hmm. a sentence I never thought I would say. Do you think that Dorit feels her territory encroached upon because of Harry's setup? <laughs> <laughs> there were pumpkins not lemons though yeah that's true and there were no <laughs> lemons lemons hanging from the top there were no lemon trees yeah it didn't look like a bridal boutique no which is didn't. ironically what dorit is now doing yeah dorit is designing bridal clothes because she has designed rooms she has designed a room in a hotel in a restaurant and she's done some bathing suits so why not bridal stuff? And I think she would actually be good at it. I think she has good style, actually. She just could, if she could maybe channel Here's that. The thing. But... I think the real star, mm-hmm. the real creative, the real mm-hmm. master of art in all of this is Dorit's plastic surgeon. <laughs> because he, they have done such a good job on Dorit mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. Dorit can, can literally wear any clothing in the world and make it yeah. look amazing. Her bridal gowns do look really nice, so yes. I will give it to her. Yeah. How much of that do you think is Dorit's design versus the other designer's design and Dorit is just co-signing it like Kyle did with her captains? Oh, 100%. Like, I think, yeah. I don't think Dorit is doing anything. I think at best, yeah. Dorit is just a person who is posting those designs on social media and getting traction. Yeah, she's just licensing she's her name. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So everybody's having a nice dinner or um, whatever. Um, do you think that they all ate those carbs? No. They barely sat down. They were drink. They they finished the first drink and they were going for the second one. They barely touched any of that food. Garcel ate it. Garcel ate it, and Garcel is going to take over all the leftovers. So Garcel's <laughs> family is going to be fed for a few days. Yeah, that yeah. way she won't have to make all that noise while her kids are doing Japanese. Oh my classes. god, <laughs> that was so contrived. First of all, Who I know. would you? Why would you make it a kid? There's that's that house is other rooms. The kid could go elsewhere for his Japanese class. Yeah, Garcel makes him come down and then starts working, and then she calls her other kid on the phone, tells him to come down to load the dishwasher, which will make more noise. It's yeah. Like, okay Garcel I know this is what we all are going through but you didn't have to contrive that whole yes I love that Garcel asks for leftovers and then mm-hmm. she's like I want to take it home where I can eat it when nobody's watching me <laughs> She's, she's the like, only one that's going to actually eat Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So they take out a cake for Garcelle. And here is when our friend Sutton starts to slowly unravel. At this point, mm-hmm. the only person who's brought up anything about the Violet Gate is Kathy says, Hi, Thomasina, yeah. to Sutton. Which, yeah. you know, Sutton hates. Yeah. But again, it was Kathy, not Crystal. Yeah. Not Crystal. They have this nice meal. Yeah. They bring out presents for Garcelle. And mm-hmm. Sutton forgets to bring a present. Yes. And it's very clear that as everybody is enjoying themselves and having a nice time, mm-hmm. Sutton has a meltdown because like Crystal said a couple of episodes ago, when Sutton is not included in a thing, Sutton feels like that is an attack on who Sutton is. Yes. Yep. And she starts to unravel. And rather than taking any ownership for how she feels because of her own actions, mm-hmm. she starts to say she's uncomfortable being there because she doesn't like Crystal and she doesn't want to be fake. Mm-hmm. And then she has, you know, a wonderful meltdown. I really, yeah. I found the last 10 minutes of this episode to be so entertaining. I want to, to watch it again. I, I didn't have time to, but I want to watch it again because it was it was beautiful. Let's watch it again on Saturday. Yes. At brunch. Yes. And just laugh and laugh and laugh. 
Because like this is what made like, this is why we keep comparing Sutton to Shannon Bedore. Yes. Because they are so unhinged that nobody takes them seriously. Like they're unhinged in a way that's actually not dangerous to anybody, only to themselves, but even that in a way where they're actually not hurting anybody. Yes. So Sutton is actually doing the nervous thing where she's putting her lipstick on and she's sitting there. She's unraveling a little bit, but nobody's really noticing that everybody's happy. The attention is on Garcelle. Garcelle is opening gifts. She's all fine. What struck me was how Kyle all of a sudden was looking at Sutton. It was almost like Kyle knew that Sutton had not been included in the present planning. Mm. D- Dorit gave a present all by herself. Yes. Rina gave a present with Erica. Yes. And Crystal asked Kyle, it was Crystal's pick of a gift. But Crystal asked, so Crystal must have asked, told Kyle and Kathy that she, they could go in with her on that gift. Wouldn't be surprised if Crystal told Kathy and Kathy mentioned it to Kyle. So Kyle, Kyle tagged Kyle on. So then Kyle suddenly realizes, oh, we left out Sutton. And now she's worried that because she went in with Crystal on this gift, she's worried about what Sutton is thinking. So yes. that's why she looks over to Sutton. Even then, Sutton is perfectly fine. She's not, she's just looking around and watching and she's not doing anything. Kyle goes over and keeps prodding her and saying, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Yeah. Sniper on the side. We yes. say this every episode. Mm-hmm. It's Kyle who's the problem. Yeah. As Sutton is melting down, mm-hmm. that is when everybody, Garcelle actually pulls up crystal and says what do you want what do you want crystal to do yeah and instead of Sutton actually even having like a normal conversation she says I want to know what crazy planet you come from like that's not a way to have a conversation with somebody who you're mad at like that's not a way that you want to have a conversation with someone when you want a resolution this is that's not a conversation that's you lashing out on crystal and crystal not responding Mm -hmm. is the thing that really drives Sutton over the edge and it's what makes me so happy (laughs) but also crystal calls Sutton crazy before crystal has called Sutton a few things which again can be triggering not good we can balance that out crystal also has now pegged Sutton to be an unstable person so she's avoiding she's going to keep her smile on her face and not respond to Sutton because she knows that anything she says it's only going to rile her up even further yes so she's just being quiet and when Garcelle pulls over Crystal and says Sutton what do you want her to say what do you want her to say so we can say it and move on Crystal is willing she's waiting there she's like yeah say it tell me what you want me to say and Sutton is like I pray to Jesus every day I just want somebody to throw me a bone and I want to know what crazy planet you come from. When they cut to Erica reacting, that's when Cherie Cherie jumps from the bushes and says, I'm the bone collector. I have the bones. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so so then yeah they freak out mm-hmm. crystal's not gonna budge she says look up the word violate i don't know why you're mm-hmm. angry about it i'm not gonna take that word back which we've talked about ad nauseum yeah because crystal feels violated that doesn't mean that Sutton was trying to violate her or that yeah. Sutton is a violator it just yeah. means that she felt also violated. at this point crystal is like ha- haven't we had this conversation and said that we have buried this and we're gonna move on why do i have to keep bringing this up again and again now at this point i don't want want to say sorry because I don't want to be talking about it in the first place and now you're just doing this for drama and I'm not going to fall for it yeah so when Crystal says you're just jealous yeah what do you think she means because I have a theory obviously Ooh, no what could it be what could uh, Sutton be jealous of Crystal what a Crystal be I don't know I didn't understand that part. obviously her concerned. ugly leather pants yes but also at this point when they're taping Sutton is only a friend of she does not have a diamond. Ah. Crystal has a diamond. Ooh, and Crystal is meshing with the girls. She's friendly mm-hmm. with the girls. And the whole time, Sutton keeps having these meltdowns where she feels left out. And yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Crystal at that point is thinking, maybe Sutton feels left out because she's she- not a full-time cast member. She's only a friend of. Yeah, and, and Sutton might actually be going through that where Sutton thinks, I have been on this show for two years and all of a sudden now Crystal is making me out to be crazy and now I'm going to be canceled and I'm not going to have this job. And also, I 
think that Sutton feels really angry at herself because she keeps having these awkward interactions and she Mm -hmm. keeps beating herself up because ultimately she knows that her performance is also her audition. So she's not going to be on the show. She's going to get canceled in real life. People Mm -hmm. are going to think she's a peeping Tom, which is like, no, Sutton, nobody thinks that. Yeah. Um, Peeping Toms don't politely knock and... um, (laughs) enter a room (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah but anyway i think that she's freaking out because she thinks she's bombing her audition and also Mm -hmm. because she feels left out and she forgot a present for her friend Mm -hmm. like you forgot a gift and rather than taking accountability for your own actions causing you this much distress it's easier for you to get mad at crystal because everybody seems to be getting chummy with crystal the full-time housewife and that's why crystal says are you jealous this is guys this is a private experience It is a private experience. I think Sutton is having perfectly defined private experience. Crystal is having her own too, by the way. Crystal is having her own private experience where she thinks Sutton is out there thinking that she's weird or whatever. But she had it and she let it pass. She let it pass. Yes, that's true. I think one of my favorite things about this interaction is just how intense and irrational and erratic Sutton is. Yeah. And just the lack of reaction from Crystal, which people on the internet are now saying is so evil and smug of Crystal. Yeah. Look, Crystal is, we've said this before, she had, she just met this lady. This lady tells her, I don't see color and I don't want to talk about race. Then she proceeds to spend the rest of the time feeling, making Crystal feel like she's the one that's attacking her. Then she Mm -hmm. has this awkward interaction where this woman walks in on her room. Mm -hmm. And even up until this, even during this party says, what were you hiding in there? Why are you so defensive? So it's not like Crystal is really just feeling these, uh, her private experience of feeling violated on her own. Sutton is also saying things. Yeah, this was the one time when I said, okay, Sutton really thought crystal was doing something weird yeah because she's like what were you doing what are you hiding why are you upset about why would you feel violated if you were just changing your clothes that wouldn't make you violated so why would you be feeling that what were you up to yeah exactly implying that crystal was doing something else in there yeah exactly so like Mm -hmm. if i had a weird interaction like that with some white lady who told me i didn't see she didn't see color Mm -hmm. and that she didn't ever want to talk about race because white people get stereotyped against them too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would also smile smugly every single time they freaked Mm -hmm. out over nothing. Yeah. I would take absolute joy in watching them crumble Mm -hmm. because Crystal has talked about her own family growing up there. She's talked about her father getting racial slurs shouted Mm -hmm. at him. She's talked about a lot of those things kind Mm -hmm. of in passing. We're slowly getting to know Crystal, Mm -hmm. but For her to watch this woman of privilege Mm -hmm. talk about how hard her life is because she feels like she's left out, quote unquote. She's upset because people think all white people are racist. Or that she just moved her house. Or she just moved her house. Oh my God. To sit there and listen to that is really difficult. And the, and the, the only thing we can do as people of color sometimes in those situations Mm -hmm. is sit there and smile because you know what? If we gave a reaction, we'd be fucked. Yeah. Sometimes people are looking for people of color to have these big reactions so then they can react to it. Yeah. If you even think about what happened with Crystal and Sutton, right? Mm -hmm. Crystal, Sutton got mad at Crystal for having a reaction to Sutton doing something. Yeah. Sutton got mad at Crystal for Crystal saying, I feel violated. Yeah. So she got mad at the reaction that Crystal is having and she skipped over what she did to cause that reaction. Yeah. And that's the problem here. All Sutton had to say is, I'm sorry. That wasn't my intention. I'm sorry you. I made you feel awkward. I felt awkward walking in. And, yeah. I sh- and that's why I reacted that way. I'm sorry if I made you feel awkward too. It was yeah. an awkward moment for both of us. Let's just move on. And that would be it. That was done with mm-hmm. Crystal and Sutton when Crystal mm-hmm. cried to Sutton and said, this is what I felt. Mm-hmm. And it was only made worse by Kyle and Dorit and Kathy who keep mm-hmm. bringing it up. Yeah. It's easier for Sutton to lash out on Crystal than it is for her to lash out on the other women. Yeah. Here's the other thing. Crystal would probably smile that way, even if it was a Asian person. Yes. Wigging out. Yes. Crystal is reacting the way any one of us would, should react to, because 
reacting to somebody losing it, if you lose it too, it just feeds that energy. So she is reacting it the way she would react if her kids lost it. Yes. She and we saw her react that way yeah. when her kids lost it. Yeah. She would just stand there, stand her ground and smile and not give, give away. And that's what she's doing. That's just her way of not reacting to somebody losing it like that. There was no pain really on Sutton's part that Crystal had to address. I don't think that pain is no. that big of a deal. It's not like Crystal was laughing at Sutton's misery of some sort where Sutton no. had, had some illness or something of that sort and Crystal was just laughing at that. No, she wasn't. Yeah. She just was refusing to react and feed Sutton's erratic energy. That's about it. That's all she was doing. And so don't get mad at Crystal for not giving you the reaction that you're mm. looking for on this show. Yeah, yeah. But also, if you're like watching this and then you're going on social media and you're looking at Twitter and you're getting upset because people are saying terrible, mean, racist things, welcome to the world, baby. Mm -hmm. That's just that's how life is for yeah. people of color in yeah. media. OK, let's talk about Real as of New York. Now, I don't usually watch the recaps, but it just like um, like the previously on Real Housewives mm -hmm. of New York. But mm -hmm. I did watch this one and I, er, I heard Ebony say something that I thought was really important. Mm -hmm. Ebony says, I'm not on the payroll to teach white women. She says this during her lunch with Leah in the previous episode. I noticed it too, because uh, when she, when, um, when Leah says, I also want you to be chill and enjoy and you are not, you, it's not your job to do this. Yeah. And that you are, you may be intimidating. Yeah. I think it's wrong for Leah to say you're intimidating. Yeah. Them. Yeah. But Ebony doesn't say anything about it. No, she doesn't. She, Ebony never says anything about Leah, which is my yeah. problem with Ebony. With Ebony, um, My yeah. problem with Ebony, for the record, is not that Ebony is talking about being black or talking about her culture or anything. Mm -hmm. My problem with Ebony is that she is trying to school a dinosaur like Ramona, who is not going to change her mind. But she has remained really quiet on the things that Leah has done on and off camera. Right. If I, if I were told by somebody that I would I could be intimidating, that would bother me. And it didn't seem to bother uh, Ebony it, at all. It was real it was calling a black woman intimidating is not mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Calling a woman of color intimidating is not great. Yeah. So anyway, this episode, we got a lot more Brashan. Let me tell you, I love Brashan. I like her so far. I like her I a like lot. Her. I really yeah. enjoy her. I love her. I love her voice. She's got this like husky voice. Right. Which I'm obsessed she, with. She reminds you of Marlo. <gasps> oh my God. She's got the Marlo, Marlo voice. voice. Yeah. Oh, you're right. <laughs> and also we can connect those dots because it's the voice that Ben and Ronnie do. Yes. <laughs> that is the voice. It's the Marlo voice. <laughs> now, this episode, I will say, was really just uh, mm. a great textbook example of all these white ladies throwing each other under the bus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or trying to get their friends to throw people on the bus. So yeah. Brashan goes to lunch with Ramona, and Ramona mm -hmm. is clearly trying to bait Brashan into bashing Ebony. And Brashan, mm -hmm. unfortunately, I mean, she doesn't take the bait, but she sort of does agree with her that Ebony is well-intentioned, but long-winded. Yeah. And she just wasn't expecting that. But, yeah, I mean, Brashan seemed to have a lot of fun after Ramona yeah. left, and yeah. she mentioned that as well. Yeah. Ebony and Sonia go to Philly for this matchmaking thing. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a question. When they're on the bus and Ebony says, no shit in Salem, mm -hmm. do you think they mean um, that Ramona, Sonia and Ramona shouldn't shit their pants? Yes. Okay. That's I what she's so. saying. Because <laughs> what the hell else could it be, right? What else could it be? Uh, it such a weird scene. <laughs> it doesn't... I, this time, this episode, I didn't... I felt a little... There was a little bit of a disconnect between Sonia and Ebony. Sonia was weird this episode. Yeah. She I think was Sonia really, gets she weird. She was overcorrecting. 
She was overcorrecting, and I think Sonia gets anxious when she thinks about relationships. Yes. And when she's trying to get into a relationship, and she's trying to be, she's like, I don't know, you know, people only know me for what my pers- personality and what is what they see on social media. They don't know the real me. And I felt like going to this matchmaker thing was a little stressful for Sonia. So she might have taken something. Sonia saying over and over again that she's an introvert and alone was Mm -hmm. really something because from the beginning of time all we've known of Sonia is that she like Party, party. Did Sonia like, say that? I thought Ebony said she was. An Ebony introvert. says she's a loner yeah. and she's an introvert. And Sonia yeah. says me too. Oh, and she yeah. goes on and on about how she's a loner, but she mm-hmm. also like partied in like what is it, Studio sixty four or fifty four, whatever yeah. that was. Yeah. She's talked about how she's partied with John John Kennedy and Madonna and Gish- yeah, and Sh- with her smoky eye and her updo. Like, yeah, what are you talking about? That you're yeah. a loner? Yeah. Like who are you? And it it made me realize in that moment. I think that she's Sonia, al- she's lonely. She's, she's not lonely. Alone. She's not a loner. She's alone and lonely. But also that Sonia just takes on the personality of whoever she's with. True. That is the other thing that she she reflects the person that she's talking to because she's afraid to be vulnerable about herself. Yes. So they go to this matchmaker and The whole time, the only thing I could really, again, yeah, pick up was Mm -hmm. Sonia sitting there and talking about all of the things that she used to do with her ex-husband. But even that, like, she's like, oh, we we just, you know, we were just, we're such loners. We like to be home all the time. Like, Sonia, you cheated on your old man ex-husband because you were partying all the time. We know that. Yeah. What are you talking about? It she almost feels like own, she, it's she, like she has to, her own narrative in her head about yeah, what happened. And then, yeah. And then also on the bus, Sonia yeah. is, she stirs the pot with Ebony. Yes. She's like, oh, you know, I know you have your own agenda. I mean, oops, I shouldn't say that. I just know that that's your personality, that you want to talk about the movement mm-hmm. and politics and everything. And mm-hmm. that's just who you are. And I tried to explain that to the girls. And, you know, they just didn't understand it. Like, Sonia, you ate a big part of that conversation, which was mm-hmm. you agreeing with them. Yes. Yeah. So Sonia tried to throw Ramona and Luann under the bus in that moment. Right. Yeah, she did that. Sonia. I know. We were just praising you last week. I know. It, but <sighs> I think she means, well, she just wants to please everybody. If she's with the girls, she wants to please them. If she's with Ebony, she wants to please them. But also she was at Ebony's election night party where she was bashing Ramona for taking pictures with Brashan mm-hmm. or taking pictures with Ebony. Yeah. Yeah, because they whatever that- it's yeah, Sonia is like whatever she read on social media that day, she's spouting yes. it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, they go on this bus trip to Salem, yeah. which yeah. like I want to understand why in they a were world so where- excited about it though. <laughs> They are, but I want to understand in what world it makes sense to take a bunch of women, two of whom are black, Mm -hmm. to a town with like a rich slave history. Mm -hmm. And also like, why would women want to go to a place where women were murdered and burnt at the stake? Because for Leah likely having planned like post, it. For likely because, having like post or pro, yes. postpartum stress. Or you progressive know. thoughts. Or progressive thoughts, yeah. Because it's Leah's party. It's Leah's turn to host something. And this is what Leah is into. This is because it's Leah. It's Leah. It's so weird. Yeah. We did learn on the tour bus about more of Brashan's cancer journey. And honestly, mm-hmm. my favorite part of this episode was Luann, Sonia, and Brashan sitting around looking in a laptop of vibrators that they all yes. want to buy. Yes. I was like, why doesn't no. Brashan have an apple? Yeah. Why She's doesn't Brashan have an apple? And why didn't we get a little bit more about that? Lou was so excited about shopping for them. She was yeah. like, let's do it right now. Let's do it yeah. now. Let me show you. <laughs> like. Yeah, she was like all into it. That's the Lou that I want. That was very authentic in that moment. They went from stage four breast cancer to let's search for vibrators. Yeah. Also, I mean, you know, Luann is really serious about vibrators because remember when they went on vacation and mm-hmm. she said that her personal hand mixer yeah, was, yeah. <laughs> was buzzing in, <laughs> in her luggage? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. They stay at the Hawthorne Hotel, which uh-huh. Nathaniel Hawthorne is like not a good guy. Nope. 
And they are like pretending, oh, is this where the, is there a ghost? Is that not a ghost? Here's my question. Mm -hmm. Why do they all have this fantasy of getting fucked by ghosts? That is like non-consensual and strange. I don't understand this. All the women keep making jokes about getting fucked by ghosts and I don't get it. (laughs) They do, they say that, but they're also shocked when they say, oh, there were 19 women were hanged here. Like here, here, like in this building, in this house here. They're like freaked out by that. But aren't you visiting Salem? Yeah, where again. All these people were. Yes. Uh, it is a sad history. It's a creepy history. Like, why would you? You know what you're getting into, right? Right? It, and it, what is. And then going to Salem and then wearing leather and tattoo. And it, had, it was such a disconnect. What are they trying to do? They all just wore like trash bags. Yeah. They go to this latex and leather party and all all the women just want to fuck all of these semi-spooky workers. Mm-hmm. I don't understand it. Like, yeah. they want to get dick down so bad either by yeah. a ghost or like a 17-year-old twin <laughs> twerking the door at this, yeah. uh, this They're restaurant. They're like, we're here to scare you. <laughs> <laughs> And so he's like, I wasn't scared, but I'll have your phone numbers. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Do you want to be interns? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Everybody thinks Sonia wanted to bone them, but I think Sonia saw an opportunity Just, yeah, for them to learn like, how to run a bath. Yeah. She was like, I could teach you something. Do you know plumbing? Do you know yeah. how to do some plumbing? <laughs> have you ever washed? Poop. Have you ever washed a thong in a bidet? Yes. Have you picked up dog poop? From a fish, <laughs> from a koi pond. Um, so they sit down and they start to talk about this trip to Philly. Mm-hmm. Everybody asks, how was your trip to Philly? And Sonia, Sonia fucking says, so insane. Sonia goes, oh, the trip was great. Ebony was very calm. <laughs> oh, the fuck says that? Who oh. says that? Who... Like what? What, is, what? What? What does that have to do with anything? Ebony okay, if I was Ebony in that situation, I'd be like, <laughs> right? Wait, here's the thing: these women. Okay, so Sonia and Lou, it's like they're all trying to throw each other under the bus to mm-hmm. impress the new black girl. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. And 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 unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah. Ebony is sort of taking their bait. Because she is that's the part that bothers me a little bit. She's noticing that Sonia is stirring the pot and she's taking the bait and she's going off on Ramona again instead of checking Sonia at that point. Yeah. Why don't you check Sonia to say, why would you say that? Say that. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? Why would you say they're asking you how the trip went? Yeah. Meaning like the matchmaking. Yeah. And your answer to them is don't yeah. worry, guys. I yeah. checked out Ebony and she's cool. She's cool. Yeah. We can still be friends with her. She didn't yeah. preach to me about black people yeah. this time. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was the weirdest, weirdest reaction. Mm-hmm. But I I did note the fact that they start to have this conversation and Ebony starts to talk about white mm-hmm. supremacists and all the yeah. white ladies lose their hair. Okay, they they don't like that yeah. word. They, they don't, don't understand it. So Ebony says, okay, wait, let me take this moment to talk about it. Mm-hmm. I thought it was strange at first, but then I realized the taping of this, I looked up when they went to Salem. Mm-hmm. It was November 17th. Ah, This is right after the election results. This Oof. is 10 days Oof. after yeah. the election results. And this is a time where you'll remember – all of the white supremacists were coming out of the woodwork, going were, on parlor. And they were, yeah, and they were threatening to come to D.C. Yes. what This is when they started planning mm-hmm. what they did on January 6th. Yeah. This is when all the insurrectionists started doing their bullshit. Yeah, And so Ebony starts to talk about it at that moment because all this shit is coming up. And I think yeah. that when she says, are you aligning yourself with white supremacists? That's what she's trying to kind of get at. But then again, like Leah, she starts to make a good point about what it is that is actually happening here. And it's about the hazing. So Leah is like, really, it's not actually about Ebony and what she's saying or Mm -hmm. her talking about race or her talking about social justice. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that you guys give her a really hard time. Mm -hmm. I think what Leah's kind of pointing out is that there is a possibility here for all of this to look inauthentic because you guys are 
historically terrible to the new girl. Yeah. But you're not going to be terrible to Ebony because Ebony is the first black woman to be on Real Housewives of New York. So they kind of do break the fourth, fourth wall, wall in that there. moment yeah, yeah. to talk about it. But yeah. then Leah loses me because she throws Ebony under the bus. They start to talk mm-hmm. about Donald Trump. Yeah. Ebony says, you know, if you associate with Trump, say it with your chest. Mm-hmm. Talk about why you like Trump. Mm-hmm. And if you like Trump because he's a racist, mm-hmm. if you like Trump because you're a white supremacist, you should say that with your chest too. Yeah. And that's yeah. what she's trying to get out of Ramona. Yeah. Which Ramona is incapable of talking about. Because Ramona... Ramona is never going to let any of those words get into her brain and never going to speak about it. She's never going to do it. She's never, 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 never going to admit any of that. Because I don't think Ramona actually knows why she votes for Trump. I think she understands why she votes for Trump, which is because she gets invited to Mar-a-Lago and she hangs around with all the rich people and she's still trying to get some rich dick. That's about all Ramona cares about. Yes, correct. She doesn't care about world, the world she lives in. She doesn't care about other people that she lives with. She doesn't care about what's happening on the border or in the, the immigration or white supremacy or any of that. She's, Ramona is about about herself. Ramona is very much like Trump like. She is. She, she totally is. is. Yeah, she is very much about Ramona and that's all she cares about. And so Ramona continues to not want to have the conversation. Mm. And I, I actually happen to agree with Brashan in that moment to say this isn't really getting anywhere because nobody is mm-hmm. quite understanding what it is that Ebony is trying to say. What yeah. Ebony is trying to say is if you align with white supremacists that we can't be friends. Mm-hmm. I'm here to be friends with you guys. I'm here to have authentic conversations with you guys. Mm-hmm. But at that time, November 17th, Mm-hmm. 10 days after the election results came in, it mm-hmm. was a very volatile time and there was a lot, a lot of white supremacist energy happening. Yeah. So at that time, what Ebony was trying to point out was if in this if in this moment you are aligning with Trump mm-hmm. despite him being backed by white supremacists, mm-hmm. then you need to say that with your chest. Mm-hmm. But Ramona, like we said, Cannot say that with her chest. There's not mm-hmm. a lot that Ramona can say with her chest mm-hmm. except mm-hmm. for her boobs because she her, the her boobs do all the talking with her chest. Yeah. yeah. So she's trying to have this conversation. The mm-hmm. women cannot handle it. Mm-hmm. Leah throws Ebony under the bus by mm-hmm. saying, you thought Trump wasn't a bad guy. Mm-hmm. Your parents mm-hmm. voted for Trump, which you can tell by Ebony's face in that moment. She's uh-huh. like, what the fuck? Yeah. And again, like, that's the stuff I want Ebony to talk it's- about. Like, yeah the more like i think ramona is such a fucking monster and yeah. we've said that a million times and i don't think luann is great but i think what's more dangerous is young people wearing progressive cloaks mm-hmm. who are actually more dangerous like leah but the other thing that I, I was also surprised with was when leah says that nobody checks leah not just ebony but nobody yeah. else picks up on that and says ramona doesn't say well how come leah can say that you're okay with it luann could say that or Bershan could have brought it up and said Bershan could have said leah but what you're saying is wrong too nobody checks leah for some reason and i don't get that I don't get that. It's not only on... We keep talking about how Ebony should check Leah. But if you're a true ally, you would also be taking on that role, right? So why isn't Sonia checking Leah? Why isn't anyone checking Leah on what she's saying? Exactly. It's just, it's annoying because it's like Ramona is a low hanging fruit and everybody can bond together about how ridiculous Ramona is. Like Ramona did yeah. that thing that you pointed out, which is where she jumps on top of people and starts yeah. smothering them. So yeah. she tries to do that on top of Ebony and she starts to compliment her and say, oh, I don't mm-hmm. know what your struggle is. You're mm-hmm. rich. You have nicer things than I do, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And again, that's a really important conversation to have where Ebony can say, you think that way, Ramona, but if you were my friend, you would understand. But she's expecting from Ramona, she's expecting a coherent reasoning from Ramona as to why she voted for Trump. Yeah. She's never going to get that. No. Ramona doesn't have a coherent and logical reasoning for it. It is not even, she doesn't even have a white supremacist reasoning reasoning for voting for Trump. She has the reasoning 
being uh voting for Trump because Trump opens up doors for her yes. in her mind yes. that she wants to open. Yes, that's a great point. Yeah. So Ebony is expecting something from Ramona that Ramona will never be is not capable of providing. Yeah. The other women are getting a little defensive because she's bundling up Luann with Ramona, Sonia with Ramona, and they're trying to say that we are not the same either. Yes. But and they're also not great. <laughs> Yeah, they're not great either, but they're like, we didn't vote for Trump, so why are you clubbing us with Ramona? Yes. And she's like, no, you understand that, but somebody else didn't. And Luann is like, oh, okay, fine. As long as you're not calling me out, I'm fine. Yeah. So everybody is stepping aside and letting Ebony and Ramona go at it. Meanwhile, Sonia is the one who stirred the pot and Leah is the one being equally obnoxious and yes. no one's calling out Leah and Sonia gets up and walks around. Yeah, it, Leah it almost like, same. Leah like she digs at R- Ramona and activates Ramona in another way where Ramona yeah. is then incapable of having a conversation with anyone. She was yeah. already incapable of having a conversation with anyone, but the Leah then screaming, you're what's wrong with the world. You're you're so fucked up. You live in your own bubble, blah, 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 is also like not, that's not helping your friend. Insulting that person is not helping your friend because Ebony is not trying to insult Ramona. Ebony Ebony is trying trying to get to know Ramona. I want to understand. Ebony's mistake is that she thinks she can understand Ramona, which is impossible. She cannot. She She is barking up the wrong tree. This is not a battle she's going to win. She's not never going to understand Ramona. It's not going to go anywhere. It's like hitting your head against a wall with Ramona. That's not going to happen. But Leah is making it worse because now the issue becomes what Leah said to Ramona and Ramona screaming back at Leah. And yet again, what Ebony wanted to say and wanted Ramona to have a conversation about is laid to the wayside. Exactly. Ugh. So there's a lot of chatter, obviously, on social media about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and Crystal and mm-hmm. Real Housewives of New York and Ebony. And I think that there's obviously criticism that is clearly mean and rooted in terrible shit. Mm-hmm. People talking poorly about Crystal or Ebony or whatever, some mm-hmm. of the commentary, obviously, you can read the comments, is really mm-hmm. racist. Mm-hmm. But we also have to realize mm-hmm. that every first season housewife, every mm-hmm. housewife's new season, they are critiqued this way. Mm-hmm. People get really in their feelings about mm-hmm. The person that looks like them getting mm-hmm. bashed on TV. Mm-hmm. Anila got bashed on TV and we said she should mm-hmm. because Anila was an idiot on Mary yeah. to Madison. Okay. Yep. Obviously, I don't think Ebony's an idiot. I don't think Crystal's an idiot, but we have to allow and like mm-hmm. we don't have to. This is the this is my point of view. And I think Arthi, this is yours too, which is you gotta allow people to have their own opinions about these things. Yeah. Just because somebody else finds Real Housewives of New York boring mm-hmm. doesn't mean that it's an attack on you or attack on Ebony. It just have to has to do with that person's opinion in that moment. Mm-hmm. We have to sort of pull away our protectiveness over these people on TV. Mm-hmm. Because let me tell you, we're Houses of Dallas. That was one of like the most painful seasons to watch. Yeah. We watched the whole thing. A lot of people are going to say, oh, it's because you added an Asian cast member and that's mm-hmm. why the season sucked. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what they say because I know what the truth was and I know why the season was horrible. And it wasn't because of Tiffany. It was mm-hmm. because of how these women reacted to Tiffany. Yes. Tiffany was just Tiffany. How they reacted to them is what's making it uncomfortable. Real Housewives of New York, Ebony mm-hmm. is Ebony. How everybody is reacting to Ebony on the show is what is making these situations awkward. Right. How Ramona reacts to Ebony, where she ignores her or where she tries to deflect, or Sonia, how she says, Ebony was calm. These conversations, how these women are reacting to Ebony is what's making these situations Mm -hmm. uncomfortable. And it's not because of who Ebony is. It's because Mm -hmm. of who Ramona and Sonia and Luann are. And so when you watch these shows and you read the commentary on social media and you hear people say this stuff, trust and believe none of the shit that's happening on social media is the stuff that's actually going to change casting or change how these women are billed, or yeah. how successful they are. Yeah, Remove yourself from it a little bit. Agreed. That's where it is. And it gets worse next week. Yeah, because they have to go, again, Leah planned a thing no where they all going to- No shit in Salem. No shit in Salem. Yeah, no shit in Salem. Except no shit. Go- <laughs> except- 
they're going to a place in Salem where they're all supposed to dress like fucking pilgrims. Yeah. Why the fuck would Leah plan a thing where two black women have to dress like pilgrims? Oh, I don't know. In November 2020. I don't understand. It's Leah. And it's why Leah. isn't Leah getting shit for it? You know, if no. Ramona had done that, yeah, she would get shit for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Leah guys- would be the one giving her yeah. shit. Yeah, everybody, you know those memes of like the real villain, the mm-hmm. TV villain, and the real villain. The yes. TV villain is Ramona. The real vin- villain is Leah. Yeah, exactly. Ramona is the comment section of a Facebook group. Mm-hmm. Leah is Twitter. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta yeah. pick your poison, mm-hmm. but it's not really that much better on either side. Luann is Instagram. Luann is the comment section on Instagram. Yeah, Luann is actually like Gen Z making TikToks about like common things that everybody knows. True. Actually, that's Sonia. That's Sonia. That's Sonia. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> With like a tiny microphone talking to us about like fucking was- Home Alone right. or something, and we're like, yeah, yeah we know. Yeah. Tell me, us- tell me you're a racist without telling me you're a racist. <laughs> exactly. Stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, well, but look, uh, all of the criticism aside, I still love watching Roni. I don't know. I'm watching it. I'm not enjoying it as much. I don't know yeah. why. Maybe because in the past, Roni has been so much fun to make fun off. Yeah. And there's not a lot to make fun off. It's a lot of serious talk, and which is fine, but there's something to f- make fun of in Beverly Hills. So I think both of them running at the same time, mm-hmm. the contrast is a little bit the other way around. So I'm actually enjoying Beverly Hills a little bit. I didn't think I would, but I'm enjoying it, particularly because Sutton is losing it and Kathy Hilton is looking for Hunky Dory. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like the difference is that Sutton is losing Using it in a way that isn't necessarily dangerous to anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ramona yeah. is belligerent in a way that is dangerous to people. Yes. And uh, what Ram- the Ramona Ebony conversation is a little bit more important. Yes. Not a little bit, a lot more important, but also I have serious thoughts about it. So it's not funny. It's not funny. It's painful and sad. Painful and sad and it feels a little PTSD because I've just gone through it and I was hoping for a break before we start thinking about it again because you know that monster is coming back. He's already, social media is already going off and people are trying to bring him back and vote for him. He's going to try and run again. All of that stuff. So things are going to get worse a year from now, two years from now when the election season starts. I just want a break for a year before we have to deal with that bullshit again. I understand. But there's no normal. There's no, You cannot escape it. There's it's no normal. Reality. There's no reality. You cannot escape it. It is just, it's just wishful thinking. Like, if I could give Ebony any advice, and I hope maybe she'll soak this in for the next season, is you have to let the racists put their own feet in their own mouths. Yeah. See, she didn't even have to say much, and Ramona was already talking about it like you you don't have to do anything ramona's gonna make herself look like an idiot it's like the same thing we say to leah right like yeah you don't have to have a fucking tantrum every time Mm -hmm. ramona's gonna make herself look stupid yeah so i'm not saying obviously ebony's not having a tantrum but that's why brashan is like there's no point in having this conversation because these people aren't listening they're not getting it it's too important of a conversation to be had in Mm -hmm. a place where you have two spooky twins and a man on stilts Yes. (sighs) Yes. <sighs> Which is why it seems a little bit more like work to watch it. I think we just have a little bit of PTSD from yeah. having to have these exact conversations in real life. In real life. Exactly. But also, this is what happens when you yeah. put a very opinionated black woman in a room with women who have never, ever met a woman like her before. And isn't it then Sonia say, or was it Luann who said Ramona doesn't even have those words? Th- this is always my issue with Housewives is... Mm-hmm. It starts to get difficult to watch when you realize that these conversations 
The reason why I get so triggered is because when I am in a room with people I don't have real relationships with as a person of color, Mm -hmm. I am nervous about having to have these exact conversations. And sometimes I have to have these exact conversations. Yeah. And it doesn't, it's not pleasant. It's really difficult. Yeah. If it's difficult for them to hear it, it's just as difficult, if not more, for us to have those conversations. To have these conversations. And then on top of it, These shows are meant to show authentic Mm -hmm. relationships, right? And I think what we're seeing between Ebony and Ramona is actually very authentic. Mm -hmm. It is what happens to us. Mm -hmm. It is what happens to people of color when they are placed in a room with people who don't understand them and don't know them. Mm -hmm. But I think for a television show like Real Housewives, one of the things that I always say is you have to have people on the show that have real friendships with each other. Yeah. With real relationships with each yeah. other. That is why Potomac works. Yeah. That's why Atlanta is getting difficult to watch because mm-hmm. now these women don't actually have any friendships with each other. Yeah. That's yeah. actually why I think Beverly Hills is good this season because all of the women actually hang out off camera. And they have become friends. And they have become friends. Yeah. But what's difficult with Rehasas of New York is, first of all, it's not enough people. Mm-hmm. You put all the burden on Ebony. Mm-hmm. It's too much. It's it's mm-hmm. too much and it's too important. And you brought in Bershan. Bershan has a slightly different viewpoint, which is fine. We sh- you should see that there's not one single kind of viewpoint. Yeah. They're not so monolith. That's fine, but also the way you brought in Barshan is you almost seem to be pitting them against each other. Yes, and that's another thing that's really yeah. uncomfortable. It's very obvious that the way the casting was done is to pit these two black women against each other to be like... So Leah and Ramona don't get along with each other. They're yeah. fighting. Let Leah bring one black person and Ramona bring the other black person. And make them fight with each other. Yeah. And it's that's gross. Yeah. And that's what it feels like is happening. Yeah. I'm noticing more and more of that Barshan is being pitted against Ebony. And um, I'm not quite happy with that. No. I know that Barshan's viewpoint is also important. And her viewpoint is shared by a lot of people. A lot of black people. And it's fine. And there are more than the two viewpoints too. Right. But it's also, I wish that instead of having... A black person come and fight your fucking fight, Ramona or yeah. Luann or Sonia. You would actually use your own fucking words. But again, yeah. these are conversations that are too important to be had with fucking idiots who are, fucking are, idiots don't understand are and don't and listen. Belligerent and yeah. Yeah. The cast is like too unhinged yeah. for these conversations. Correct. For it to be like I actually thought what what whatever happened in um the Sag Harbor stuff, that mm-hmm. was good. That told us that they did not get it yeah the sag harbor thing proved that they didn't understand right and again i think that we have to think about the context of when this was filmed this was filmed during a really difficult time it was so at that time this is what we were thinking about we were thinking about if you voted for trump and you're still mad about the election results it's probably because you align with white supremacists correct so what she's asking is true but again is she asking that of everybody that she knows is she asking that of somebody like leah yeah and and if she is having these conversations with leah i'd love to see that on camera exactly and again these are important conversations Mm -hmm. and that that's what's difficult is it's these are very important conversations that we should be having but we need to be having them with people who actually give a shit and people yeah. who actually can make an impact and have the mental capacity to handle big words because Correct. they they don't they don't understand nuance they don't like again it's not ebony it's these women and how they're reacting to ebony and that's Correct. what's difficult to watch yep but i still like it and i'm still watching yeah. it because <laughs> so you know yeah i did make a reel of the way <laughs> so that's that but. all right guys well that was a lot but that was a lot that was we will talk to you on oh my god we're gonna talk to them on wednesday and usually we talk about married to medicine and shots of sunset uh-huh. but i think we're gonna have to talk about potomac baby <gasps> I think for the premiere, we will talk about it on our Wednesday episode. But after that, we will talk about all of our Housewives stuff together on Saturdays, yeah. as usual. It'll be just before the next episode air. It'll be a good refresher. A refresher. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's just going to be us giggling over how much we love Karen anyway. Yes. Oh, I love her. Okay, guys. We'll talk to you then. Bye. Bye.